In the privacy community, open source seems to be all the rage. We value open source operating systems like Linux, open source communication apps like Signal and Matrix and Session, and some people even put open source ROMs on their phones or firmware on their routers. So what exactly is open source and why are we so obsessed with it? In this video, I will try to teach you everything you need to know about open source. So let's start off with the obvious. What does open source mean? Any piece of software is written in code. Open source simply means that that code there's different kinds of open source. Some of it are publicly available simply so that you can look at it and inspect it and make sure that it does what it claims to do, like Signal, for example. Others, you are allowed to modify it and make your own version. For example, Firefox has been modified into numerous other browser forks like LibreWolf or Waterfox, and Brave itself is a fork of Chromium, which is the open source version of Google's Chrome. I don't remember where I read this, so sadly I can't give credit, but I remember reading a blog post one time that said to think of open open source and proprietary code like cooking at home versus eating out. Proprietary is eating out at a restaurant. You might be allowed to make some changes, but you don't really have control over the ingredients they use, the quality of them, or sometimes you're not even allowed to fully know what the ingredients are. For example, think of a restaurant's secret sauce. Open source, on the other hand, is a lot like cooking at home. You can choose exactly what ingredients you want, you can make the substitutions you want, and you know everything about what's going into that meal. An important thing we need to talk about when we talk about open source software is DRM, which is Digital Rights Management. To put it in less technical terms, DRM is anti-piracy software. It's things written into video games and eBooks and digital movies and stuff like that that are supposed to prevent you from stealing it and sharing it around. For most people, that's not really an issue. I think most of us would agree that creators deserve to get paid for the work they do. The problem is that DRM can and does regularly get abused. I cite two examples of this on my website, a printer and a refrigerator. A printer in one case decided that it would no longer accept third party ink printing cartridges. And for those of you who have a printer, you probably know ink is not cheap. But if you go online to a third party retailer like eBay, for example, you can usually find the ink a lot cheaper, sometimes half off or more. One printer company decided they didn't like that anymore and they programmed their printers to refuse to accept any ink cartridge except theirs. Same thing with a refrigerator. There was a smart refrigerator that decided that it would not work unless you had a fresh manufacturer created water filter, even if you don't use the water in the fridge. There are countless examples of this exact thing happening. For example, Amazon famously took 1984 out of their digital stores because of what I believe was a copyright dispute, but I could be remembering that incorrectly. The thing that made it so controversial was they even pulled it out of customer libraries from people who had already bought it. That would be like the bookshelf not only taking it out of the store, but then going to your house and taking the copy you bought. DRM regularly gets abused, but open source allows us to keep it in check. Now, it should be noted that open source is not a perfect thing. There are several recent studies that found that open source projects actually tend to have more vulnerabilities because many of the creators work on a donation basis and they're a small team, usually just one person who's doing this on their free time. Having said that, I'd still revert back to, for example, a famous story from Kevin Mitnick, where he talks about a company who promised that they were using a very strong encryption, but in reality, their encryption was only about half as powerful as they claimed. Open source may not be perfect, but it does give us that freedom and assurance that we can go in and audit it if we want to and look at it. Granted, that does take a level of technical knowledge and programming knowledge, but the fact is the ability is there and there is potential for problems to be noticed and fixed faster because there can be more eyes on it. Again, this is not always the case, but the potential is there and that's why we tend to value open source. On my website, I have promised to always prioritize open source technologies when possible, provided that they have a proven record of being well maintained and regularly updated and a good reputation for being reasonably safe. As with any digital product, you should always be careful with what information you're trusting to them. If you are interested in using more open source tools or learning more about this subject, be sure to check out my website, thenewoil.xyz.